Oh my gosh, check out this butterfly. I am so happy that I got this to work. It is all working in unison. You can see that we're using triggers to make this really easy to create. And we've got this asteroid going off because it's an investigative butterfly. And anyway, let's go take a look at how we made this. And you'll quickly note that we have four triggers. These work kind of like keyframes in the animation. So if you had more of these, you could have a bunch of different places that it flies to, and you could even set for how long it stays at each of these. We just have it currently rotating in motion smoothly around. But um, as you can see, it's kind of flying in a straight line, but if you added four more, you could make it be more like a circle, or you could make it fly around from tree to tree. It's very easy to do, so let's go take a look. Let's start by looking at our variables. So you'll notice we have both wings, one and two, and those are just objects that we've linked to. We have position one, two, three, and four. Those are the trigger objects. We also have the movement over time. So this is how fast it moves from each position. And then we also have the rotating triggers. Those are these two triggers. So those are rotated to be where we want the wings to rotate to. So that's how we get our rotation. And we have count, which is a variable that we use in motion in the script. And we have flap time, which is how fast are the wings flapping. So you'll notice it takes a quarter of a second to go up and down, so it's a half second per flap. So how do we do this? Well, when the world is started, we'll start by sending two events. The first event is called loop, and it's the loop of the wings flapping. The second event is butterfly motion, so BM1. And let's go ahead and start by understanding how are those wings flapping. And so it's really quite simple, actually. If count, so this is that number we have in motion. If count is less than 15 times our flap time, because if you wanted it to be longer, you're going to need this to take longer. So we use this as a multiplication. So you could maybe change the flap time to be a second. Maybe you made a bird. So you could also use this code on different um, types of creatures. So if count is less than 15 times the flap time, then we're gonna set count to be count plus one, and then we're gonna rotate to the rotation trigger over flap time, so that's how fast we're flapping, on wing one, and then we're gonna rotate to rotate trigger the opposite trigger, so trigger one versus two over flap time on wing two. So both wings are flopping, flapping, but they're flapping in opposite directions because they're on opposite sides of the wing so the rotation value that they're flapping to is opposite so as you'll see here once we get to 15 we now are greater than 15 so when count is greater than 15 times flap time we then set count again to, we keep increasing count and then we rotate with rotation on trigger one so now you'll see that we have swapped these so now it's flapping in the opposite direction so it goes down and then up and that is how we can get this to use just two triggers and to represent the rotation, and that's rotation of those triggers. And then on flap time again, on wing one and wing two. When we get greater than 30 times flap time, we set count to be zero, so then we reset it. And so as I've gone through this, I've realized we actually only need this uh, set and addition to run once, so we're just gonna move that to the top and delete this extra one. Uh, so simplifying the code there. Now, remember, at the very beginning of the world, we also start the motion of the butterfly. And so this is our butterfly motion loop. I want to quickly point out that if you wanted to run this on a, on a delay, like say you didn't want the butterfly to start moving for a minute, well, you could say, rather than sending event instantly, you could say send event with delay, and then you'd have a time variable here, and you could say set it to be 60 seconds or however long you want to wait until it starts. So then, the butterfly is going to move to position one and rotation one. So we're using the rotation and the position of the trigger over the move time that we set. So that's our butterfly move time over here that we set to three seconds. And that's on self because this script runs on the butterfly itself. And then we tag the wings that are inside the butterfly. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Then we send event butterfly motion two to self over the same exact amount of time that it takes for the butterfly to move there is how long we wait until the next event is run. And then we run BM2. We do the exact same thing in BM2. Then we run BM3. And you could do this as many times as you want. So you can have as many keyframes in this animation as, as you'd like. So here we have an example with four. But when you get to the last one, the only difference is you send event BM1. So that way it's looping back to the beginning. And remember, you could do this again where 
Say it ends and it lands on a flower and you think that's really cool and it's just flapping its wings there for a minute. Rather than doing butterfly move time and making it the exact same amount of time as it takes to get there, you could add a plus symbol here and do butterfly move time plus, say a delay of five seconds, and then it's gonna wait at that flower before it moves forward. So that's pretty cool too. And uh, I'll just quickly demonstrate that because it really is so simple. Just grab the plus symbol, drag it here, come over here, grab butterfly move time, and then I recommend creating a new variable, which you can call delay. And then that delay will set to be two seconds. And then we put the delay here. And so now we're gonna see when the butterfly moves around, it's gonna continue rotating. And when it gets here on this fourth point, it's gonna stay here for two seconds and then it flies off. So imagine you put a flower here. Now it's just landed on a flower. It does a little like pollinate thing and then it flies away. So pretty easy to do. And like you can see how quickly and easy this is to animate. So hopefully this helps get you started. I do wanna quickly show you what's happening inside the butterfly. All right, so inside of our butterfly, you can see it's visible, it's collidable, it's animated. Uh, we did not record an animation because this is all programmed and we have the script and you can see that the wings are attached. You can see the positions are attached. You can see that we can change the time from inside here. So every, we could have like a bunch of butterflies and they all fly slightly differently. We could have them flap their wings differently. We could have the delay be different and just kind of have a variety of butterflies or a variety of animals because there's other animals that flap their wings like birds or eagles. And so this is a very reusable script, which is amazing. So that's cool too. And the next thing that we have is we're gonna go inside of the object. And from inside the object, we can see that these two triggers are both rotated counter by 90 degrees. And then we have our wings here. And you'll notice that the wings have a counter point, which is also a trigger that's disabled. And this gives them this even spacing so that the way the center point is here in the center of the butterfly, and that way they rotate on the axis of the center. So it makes it really easy to animate. And we do that for both sides. So you can see each side has its own. And that's why it highlights this giant square is because it's filling this whole space. And the same with the other side, you can do that too. And that's pretty much all there is to this butterfly. So, and then you can just tag those objects in by dragging the doohickey down here. As you can tell, I'm really happy with how this butterfly turned out. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.